so on the subject of teens um I don't know I did my, I did an internship and I saw a few teens in my practice and I just love them I don't know I feel like and I maybe I'm just weird I don't know I could just this could totally be that I'm just weird <laughs> I just feel like teens are very misunderstood and they're not treated like the beautiful human beings that they are and we kind of talk over them we talk around them we have secrets about them we kind of ignore them as a society we kind of like let them figure it out you know parents are busy working just to keep the bills and it's not their fault you know that's the way our systems are built so from your perspective what do you think teens need the most yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you said. I think teens are amazing people, you know, and sometimes people ask me like, what's your secret? Why are you so good working with teens? Like how, what do you do? And I say, actually, I don't make a difference. We treat teens the same way as anybody else. We do not make a difference at all because that's, I think, one of the problems that people treat teens as the separate group and have lots of... Um, you know, judgment and uh, stigma on teens that is completely unfounded. So there was a very interesting piece of research done by an anthropologist named Chip Clark, and he interviewed, did in-depth interviews with teens about their experience in this culture. And uh, the book that he published is called Hurt, like being hurt, right? Wow. Because he says the gist of what he heard from teens is that they feel completely abandoned by adults. And the reason they're so peer oriented is because the adults are not there. They're totally wow. absent. In our program, we see that teens desperately want to be connected to adults and want to be seen and witnessed and affirmed, like seen for who they are by adults. Uh, so much, right? So that is a totally wrong perception on teens that they don't want to have anything to do with adults. We see it the to total opposite. Um, and so, you know, I think that's, that would be a good start. It made me tear up because <laughs> I just thought back to my own teen years. And that's exactly how I felt that the parents in my life, the, the adults in my life, I was trying everything I could to make them proud of me. Like I would play all the sports. I was in all the clubs and I was just like, please see me. Like, do you see me? And then when they didn't see me and I realized they weren't is when, you know, I just quit everything and it's just so sad. It just, oh my God. So thank you for that validation moment. I didn't really need, it. but no, I think you're absolutely right. And even in my own experiences with working with teens, it's like the teen is smoking marijuana because they're reacting to their home life because their parents are yelling all day. And every time the teen would tell the parents something, they run and tell all the relatives. And so then they don't feel safe in their own home. So of course they're going to be a delinquent and run it on the street and smoke marijuana because they, they want to feel like they belong to something and their friends give them that feeling. And then they get that relaxation from the drugs that they're taking. You know, it just all makes so much sense. It's not, I think we, we just complicate things that you have a chemical imbalance. You have, you have a disease, there's a pill to fix that and you'll be fine. And it doesn't, it just look at where it's got us. Yeah. And, you know, I do the timelines with the teens. So I work with teens in my private practice who are like on the very severe end with mental health problems, substance use problems, all kinds of problems. Right. And on five meds and five diagnoses and all of that. And I say, OK, let, let's just go back here. Let's just look at the timeline. How does this all start? Right. Well, I went through this really painful breakup when I was 15 years old. And then what happened? Well, then, you know, my mom brought me to the psychiatrist and I got my first prescription for antidepressants. I'm like, do you understand that in that moment, that's not depression. Like you were not, you don't have depression you're born with. You had an emotional reaction to something painful. Yeah. You know, and that, of course, then that sets in motion lots of other consequences, right? that make it worse and worse and worse. The, the, I mean, what it comes down to, I think, cause you know, it's the parents are also not at fault. I mean, they are, they're doing the best they can. I think what we're seeing is a profound disconnect, you know? So one, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, we had a very profound experience in our community. We started parent classes, right? So classes for parents who were 
very challenged with the teen with substance use issues. And uh, we had two women activists who were parents who had gone through hell themselves with their own children with these issues. And then they started this incredible parent program. And so parents got together, right? Who dealt with the same challenges. And I tell you, that set something in motion where for the first time, these parents could start letting go of the stigma on themselves and on their children by seeing in the mirror of the other parents, we are not the bad guys. We didn't fuck up. It's just hard. And we got, now we're going to support each other. Wow. And that has ripple effects, right? So these parents are now building the village that we lost. Wow. So I feel like that's a very profound thing, you know, and, and for everybody who's listening, that will be a good start for us to create the village for us, right? For parents, for the teens, some of these like healthy, you know, connections that go beyond just yeah. me and my kid or me and my parents that's not going to work. We can't be everything for our teenage child. We can't be everything for our one parent or two parents. We need a village of caring people, caring young people, meaningful things to do. And then we see a lot of good things can ripple from that. I love that.